This map first impressions video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody and welcome back to another map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Taylor's Farm 4X by Kaz64. This map can be found over at modhub.us and there will be a link in the description below. As you can see by the title slide, this is a multi-fruit map. Now I know some folks basically don't want to look at any map unless it's multi-fruit, so that checks the box for this. So you have a big 4X square-fielded multi-fruit map right here. So with that, let's just go ahead and jump on in. We're going to deselect everything, but we are going to pick the Ropa Panther 2 multi-pack. So in the description, of the uh, of the map over at modhub.us, there is a link to this Ropa pack. Uh, since this is multi fruit, you're going to need a way to harvest all of those additional crops, and this Ropa pack is going to give you that capability. Go ahead and select the DLC just in case. Let's pull up the log. See, the additional crops are millet, cabbage, red cabbage, lettuce, rye, spelt, clover, carrot, onion, poppy, hops, and tobacco. There we are. Map has been loaded up. This is our start point. I will tell you, if you do play this map on farm manager mode or start from scratch, the buildings you see here at the main farm are gone, including the animal areas. But interesting enough, the equipment, or at least some of the equipment, remains. The only thing that remains as far as buildings is an interesting aspect. So we've got the farmhouses gone, but this little uh, dolphin hot tub thing, it remains. The deck here stays. No matter what. It's, it's kind of funny, actually. Load up the map. Everything is gone. <laughs> There's some equipment, but not all the equipment is there. And, uh, well, the deck is still there. At any rate, let's go ahead and take a look at the map. Come on out. We have a 4X map with lots of square and rectangular fields. Let's take a look at the lands section. See, we start out by owning fields 17 and 18. Includes the main farm here. It's $2.9 million to sell that. Now, there is a nice little square here right beside the main farm that's $160,000. So I started thinking, well, if you boot this up in farm manager mode, build out your farm, this whole area is going to cost you $2.9 million. That's more than what you get as far as money. But you could buy this little plot here start building your farm out and uh, well pretty much you're going to be stuck at that point because the smallest fields up here 700,000, 600,000, 900, almost a million, 1 million, 700,000, 800,000. I don't think you're going to be buying any land with the 1.2 million dollars that you get from the start unless you do contracts. So there are contracts on the map, and some of them pay out quite nice if you're willing to spend a really long time getting the harvest in. So Field 9, for example, $437,000. But what's Field 9 at? Here's Field 9. It's one of the bigger fields on the map. I don't have an exact size of Field 9, but I can tell you it's $3.3 million if you want to buy it. Oh wait, this will tell you the size, won't it? 200 acres is field 9 alone. Field 22 is 164 acres. Field 5 is 135. Take a look. See how big field 5 is. Side fields. Nope. 6, 7. 7 is probably a square field. Yep. Okay. So we really don't have a good clue as to how big the smaller outside fields are. But at any rate, you can see the land prices are pretty expensive uh, compared to other 
play modes that you might be starting out with. So as far as additional crops, as I said when the map loaded up, we have carrot, onion, clover, lettuce, cabbage, red cabbage, millet, rye, spelt, hops, poppy, and tobacco. We have several sell points on the map that accept most of our standard crops. We also have some custom crop icons that have been added here to the map. Several sell points for eggs and milk. A pair of sell points for wool. And the same pair of sell points for cotton. So we have fuel here and water, but I don't see any way of selling those. There probably isn't a way to produce those at this point. There is a BGA on the map. You guys, that here in a moment. Then over here we have our extra crops. Right here. BGA is right down here. And it is part of the land that we already own. So there's the biogas plant. Let's take a look at our starting fleet. Here's the garage. We start out with the JCB and the John Deere 8400R. Range in horsepower from 235 to 450 horsepower. We've got the MAN TGS truck. As well as the Agco Ideal 8T Harvester with the grain header. We have the crampy... Um, SP2 semi-trailer. You have a row crop header in the Diamant HS12. Diamant. Got the large Lemkin Plow Porsche Cruiser Cultivator. We have a pair of cedars. Well, we've got the Amazon Condor Cedar, and then we have the Tempo Planter. You see the planter here is going to be doing our corn and sunflowers and soybeans, but it also is going to be doing um, sugar beets, cotton, <laughs> carrot, onion, red cabbage, cabbage, and lettuce. Whereas cedar is going to add rye, hops, poppies, and, well, we don't know. Dot, dot, dot. We have the fertilized spreader. We've got the Pottinger wing mowers and the front mower. Big Pottinger tether and coon rake. We've got the square baler. And the Joskin water tank. We've got a large header trailer, pair of weights, and then we have large cow pasture, pig enclosure, sheep enclosure, and horse paddock. We've got the free range chickens by G and G Modding, and then we have a custom silo for the multi grain, the multi fruit silo. But pretty much holds everything that is available in the game. We've got a small bunker silo, several easy sheds. And then our farmhouse. Let's take a look over here under placeables and see. Do you have the ability to put down more custom free range chickens? Do you have the ability to put down another multi fruit silo? Now, this one holds 3 million liters, so just putting one down maybe in a more convenient location. And then we have our custom farmhouse with minus the surfboards. So let's go ahead and just take a quick little tour around starting farm base here. It's kind of an industrial farm. Not a lot of buildings, not a lot of sheds going on. Just the uh, the open-ended stuff. Got some of our equipment lined up here to our right. Some of our equipment lined up here to our left. Way down there we have our water tank and our water trailer. Then we have our animal areas here in the back. So they're all in-game base animal areas, so we really don't need to go into detail as to where each specific trigger is located. But you do see we do start with some animals. Let's take a check. We start out with eight, 12 chickens, it appears, five cows. Uh, we got um, 13 pigs, it looks like, and 10 sheep. And then two horses. Horses. We have our sheep. But it doesn't look like we have anything in any of the food areas. Let's take a look. Oh, so we start out with animals, but we have no food to feed them. 
do start or do we do not start? Let's see. We have anything in the silos? Okay, we've got a few crops in the silo. So we could, in theory, feed our pigs and our chickens. But we're going to be hard up to feed our um, sheep and our cows without some assistance. Sheep. Cows. You know, the small silage bunker. And that pretty much is, you know, the starting farm area. Over here, we have that big open square area that I mentioned was $160,000. It's just a big slab of concrete ready for you to do what you need to do with it. So with that, let's just go ahead and get our Mahindra set up. Take a look and figure out where the shop is. Shop. There it is. Okay. And zoom on out here. See right in front of us, we do have the customized repair trigger. It's front of the shop. Some Dutzfar tractors I saw on the inside of the shop. Got some Dutzfar tractors up on the roof. See, we've got some more placeable areas scattered around. Look, this particular placeable area is just $49,000. That would be a pretty good spot for a starting farm. Got one down here, 239 or 236,000. 105,000 dollars. And I think that's just about it. You have McDonald's across the street here from the shop. That is a sell point. Have a fuel station, fuel depot, the BP. Directly across from the McDonald's. I guess since we're going north, we might as well just go ahead and check out the cell points that are to the north. Then we'll make our way down south. What we'll do is we'll go over here to the sawmill and then kind of double back. Personally, this isn't my style of map, just from the standpoint that it's just flat, it's square, um, feels a little barren, but uh, it will definitely suit some players' needs. Probably won't run into a lot of problem with hired help. Horseplay should be really good on this map because there isn't really a lot for things to run into or you to uh, be impeded with. See if this hedge has a collision. It does indeed. I believe I read. Uh, let me read. So there's a barbed wire. The description says there is a barbed wire fence and hedges added to the main farm that can be cut down if you want. Same as the rest of the hedges around the map. Oh, let's go ahead and check this out. Must have done the alien gym trick and made these hedges cuttable. See? And we're gonna need to get a McCulla. Excuse. Chainsaw out. Oh, of course. I don't have access to the land. Well, there you go. There's a little. There is a little uh, hint to you guys. get access to the land and then you can cut down the hedge, right? Alright, now let's see if it works. That. <laughs> that is great. Little trick. If the hedge is getting in your way or you want a bigger access to the field, well, make your own, right?
head on up here. So we do have a kind of a deliberate forest over here on this corner of the map. Of European traffic. Up with that, guys. Why are you driving on the wrong side of the road? So while there is a smattering of of trees around the map, this is this section over here is kind of your deliberate forested area. Here, here we have our log cell point and our wood chip cell point. I guess let's just just drive down this side of the map. We'll make a big loop. How about that, make a big loop, and we'll come back and we'll end at the grain mill, as opposed to doubling back, because it will let us kind of get a little bit of a sense of the size of this forest. This is no, this isn't anything to uh, shake a stick at. The fact that this is 4x, I'm rolling at 60 miles an hour. See how long it's taken for us to uh, to get through this forested area. That is something to remember. With respect to 4x maps in general. PDA is a little bit deceiving because everything is basically twice as big as it looks. While we're driving fairly straight, let's go ahead and take a look down across the map. It's fairly flat for the most part. Was some minor, you know, undulation of ground terrain here and there, but it is fairly, fairly flat. Go ahead and pull in here to the animal dealer. Want to deliver your own animals, or if you want to just come to the animal dealer and buy them and have them delivered for you, got your trigger right there. Now, before we go, I failed to show you guys the uh, the Panther Ropa 2. That was the mod. So here under beat technology, we have the Ropa 2 Panther by Kaz 64. It has the capability of not only doing sugar beets, but also potatoes, sugar cane, onions, carrots, lettuce, red cabbage, and green cabbage. I guess regular cabbage. As opposed to the regular Panther 2, which only does sugar beets. This mod also has the distinction of being able to change the colors. And you have two different capacities. You have the 30,000 liter capacity or the 90,000 liter capacity. Increase it up to 500,000 liters also. So given the fact that this is 4X, basically kick this thing all the way up to 500,000 liters and not have to worry about unloading it all that frequently. Go to Tools, and then we go over here to Beat. Technology. You'll see that we now have a Ropa header that does potatoes, sugar beets, 18 miles per hour working speed, compared to the standard 7 mile per hour working speed. We have the cabbage, carrot, red cabbage, onion, sugar cane headers, and lettuce. That's where you're going to go to get those custom um, harvesting equipment for the additional crops. Now, the other crops like clover, you're just going to be able to mow that down with just a standard mower. I would assume you might need to forage it. You might need to use a forage harvester. I think typically when clover or alfalfa were in other maps in 17, typically had to use a forage harvester to collect that. Only have, I guess, one mowable crop that was typically grass. All right, making our way down here to the corner of the map. Quite a long, long drive. 
Down here to the mill station. Another one of those large placeable areas. Like the mill station has an in and an out road. So you probably will be pretty good coming through here with a road train. Coming up through there. Big wide turn and coming back out. Oh! Vicious car, are you? I think that's just decorative houses over there. So I guess you could buy this these squares that are fairly cost effective and probably you know plow those up and make them fields if you wanted to. You're doing a start from uh, scratch or farm manager deal. So if you look at the PDA doesn't show that there is a trigger at this upcoming building here on the on the right sorry on the left uh, but there is indeed it is indeed a cell point coming up here it's one of those um, giants features if you will that if you've got the trigger too close to the edge of the map times it doesn't show up on the PDA unless you zoom in of course we can't zoom in on the mini map just go Swing on in here. Up oh, now it comes up as we get closer to it. Through here, and yeah, looks like fairly good sweeping arcs. Took our roll cage up. Really good sweeping arcs with respect to uh, clearing road train through here. I think what I'm going to do is we're going to head up north, check out the BGA, go down a block, and then south, I pick back up at the supermarket. Oh, and as I said earlier, the BGA is included in the starting land that you own under new farmer mode. So it's the standard Farm Sim 19 BGA. We have the digester there. We have our digestate out, and then we have the two large open-sided bunkers. So like I said, let's go over a block, then down a block. Put us right where the supermarket is. I don't think there's much need for any sort of flyover or anything on the map. I mean, it's just going to be a whole bunch of big square fields. Lots of headlands here on the edge of the fields. Just grass for your equipment to turn around for a hired helper. Horse play if you uh, didn't put in headlands or anything.
Oh. <laughs> Thorn th those hedges. Down here. This is. Interesting structure. Cell point is right down. Supermarket. And then we have the dump point around back. Houses in another plot of uh, placeable area. So you could probably have, what was it, like five farms on the map here if you're going to do a uh, competitive multiplayer. It's definitely five, I believe, areas to uh, separate buildable areas. Kind of the harbor. Here. here, I believe this is where maybe we uh, resell our milk. Let's go ahead and check. Yep, that is indeed where we're going to sell our milk. Go ahead and loop around here and then make our way up the north side of the map or up to the north side of the map going up the west side. West side story. Going up the west side, we have Taylor's Bales. And then we don't have anything else until we get all the way up to the top of the map. We've got newer sales and farmer's market, Taylor's Wool, and then the grain mill. That's another aspect that you typically see with these big 4X maps is it's quite a, uh, it's often quite a hike drive one cell point to the next or from farm to uh, to cell point failed cell point for hay strong grass and with this curvy road be quite an interesting road to bring a, uh, a train of bale trailers in here with appear that there's any traffic on this side of the map as opposed to the other side where we were dealing with traffic. Kind of interesting. Yeah, you can see 60 miles per hour pedal to the metal and it's going to take us a while to get up here because we got another whole field length to travel. Oh, no, there is traffic. comes a car. There doesn't appear to be any sort of train to the map. You're going to be transporting all of your crop uh, via the via road. You want to be on the road train. There is no train on the rails here on this particular map.
down and make our corner. Here we have the manure sails. Name of this particular cell point. Point there. Up across the northern side of the map to the uh, to the mill, which is the last cell point here on the map. While we're on our way up there, let me know, guys, what do you think of Taylor's Farm? Multi fruit, the 4X variety, version 1.0.1, .1, and can be found over at modhub.us. There will be a link in the description. Oh, this is the wool and cotton cell point. Come in here, a bit of a tight loop, and there is your trigger right there. All right, guys, so like I said, let me know in the comments, what do you think of Taylor's Farm Multifruit 4X version 1.0.1? Till next time. Happy farming.